Hello everyone, I am Udayangani Kulatunga, Director of the Multidisciplinary Research Centre for Disaster Risk Reduction. The centre was established in year 2018. The key objectives of the centre include to undertake research related to disaster risk reduction, to provide strategic input and practical guidance to policymakers and disaster management practitioners, to promote multidisciplinary collaboration for research and teaching activities, and to develop and assist postgraduate research community. In order to showcase the work carried out at our center, we have selected one of the main projects, the Project Mobilize. The aim of this project is to develop a digital infrastructure that can offer intelligence to a range of agencies to work together to reduce the impact of disasters. The project Mobilize is funded by the Engineering and Physical Science Research Council and the Global Research Challenge Fund. The principal investigator of the project is University of Salford, UK, and there are a number of international and local partners involved within this project. The key implementations in Sri Lanka include establishing a resilience framework, assessing the current multi-agency collaboration approaches and proposing a new collaborative model and establishing a digital platform that can be used for disaster risk reduction. The development of the resilience framework was carried out with the involvement of many subject matter experts, practitioners and academics. Firstly, the disaster resilience was defined through workshops and the three capacities related to disaster resilience was identified. Thereafter, the measures for the three capacities were investigated, refined and prioritized with the involvement of disaster management experts in Sri Lanka. And the capacity index scores were also defined. By using these details, it is expected to develop a community capacity assessment tool where the stakeholders will be able to assess the level of resilience for different dimensions of resilience, such as physical infrastructure, social and governance. Another aspect that we looked from Mobilize Project is strengthening the multi-agency collaboration in Sri Lanka through the means of a digital technology. We considered the different political and administrative systems and the digital strategy in Sri Lanka for this. Challenges of the multi-agency collaboration and strategies to address these challenges were also identified. Further, number of limitations in the current practices for disaster risk reduction was identified. As we know, vulnerability of the community, exposure to hazard, and the characteristics of the hazard itself increase the risk from a disaster. Within this context, the data required to evaluate the disaster risk were identified and categorized and the three main categories as shown in this slide. And these data were collected from various organizations such as from Urban Development Authority, Disaster Management Center, National Building Research Organization, Met Office, Irrigation Department and so on. Thereafter, this information were feed into develop the mobilized platform. Further, the future position in terms of developing a digital platform for disaster risk reduction was identified and considered when developing the mobilized platform. Now I will hand over to Diane to demonstrate the mobilized platform. Thank you, Professor. I am Diamond Singh, a doctoral student at the University of Salford. The Think Lab of the University of Salford is developed the Mobilized Research Interactive Decision Making tool is now on Timomo to test various applications on the ground. Through the online web portal, you can log into the web applications and folders. You need to insert the credentials to give in the other box. Once you enter, you can see the data relevant to your agency. If you want to add more data, you can add that information to the data engine. Once you enter the data, you can visualize that information in that risk visualizer tab. And you can do much stylish work on, to enhance usability. Prescenario Generator is a new tool in which you can generate disasters or hazard scenarios by using uploaded data. 
In this scenario generator, you can identify a number of buildings prone to certain disasters and get demographic information. You can build a number of scenarios based on different hazard environment or risk status. And you can visualize these scenarios to public or government agencies. The tool will be expanded to compare different scenarios to estimate the best possible actions that we can do to reduce the risk in future. The Mobilize 3.0 includes a remote sensing application package that is good for disaster mitigation, construction monitoring, urban design, town planning, and many other activities. The drone survey images can be captured in given intervals and it helps to make time series data for different analysis. Remote sensing application provides various calculations on this time series data. The user can create different cross-sections, calculate height variations, and profile sections. In addition, the tool can calculate 3D surface variations, volume calculations, and site deformation information. This is an example how the tool can be used for construction activity monitoring in landslide mitigation. And here we used cross-section based monitoring system applications. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Adisha Vijayasiri, a member of the Disaster Risk Reduction Research Group. In the upcoming slides, our research students will present their research work and I will introduce their research topics. First, Hasara Maitri will present her research work on the use of synthetic aperture radar data for natural disaster mitigation. Next, Dinuka Disoisa will present his work on Mobilize IoT service and Mobilize mobile application. Then Sinuri Disara will present her work on digitally enhanced disaster preparedness approach to natural disasters in Sri Lanka. Next, Miami Tasandara will be presenting her work on enhancing policy implementations towards successful climate change mitigation and adaptation in Sri Lanka. Then Udatara Damsari will be presenting about a framework to support risk-sensitive urban development in Sri Lanka. Finally, Lichini Nikesha will present her work on characteristics of a digital platforms for supporting an early warning system for dam breaks in Sri Lanka. How our research works are aligned within the disaster management cycle is shown here. Damsari's work is aligned with the impact assessment. Miami focuses on disaster mitigation and prevention, while Dinuka's work is aligned with the same topic as well as prediction and early warnings. Hasara's work is aligned with disaster preparedness and prediction and early warnings. Disara focuses on the disaster preparedness area in her research work. Lichini also works in the area of disaster prediction and early warnings. The research students will now present their research work. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Hasara Maitri and my research is use of synthetic aperture radar data for natural disaster mitigation. It's supervised by Dr. Jinsha Vijay Siri and Professor Terence Fernando. If I briefly explain about the overview of my presentation, first I will explain the what SAR data is and the problem statement of my research. Then I will go into the research objectives, literature review, finally the methodology and results. Synthetic aperture radar data has been emerged as a preferred method for remote sensing because of its all day 
all weather sensing capabilities. Various online platforms now provide SAR data freely available for research purposes. I use Copernicus Open Access website to get SAR data. The, there are various issues that are inherent with synthetic aperture radar data that we need to do pre few pre-processing steps before actually going into the algorithm. These are geometric distortions, speckle noise, orbit correction, and geocode correction. The disaster occurrence that has been reported by DMC indicates that 58% of the percentage accounts for flood, flooding. Therefore, I think it's very important to come up with the solution to mitigate and reduce the risk of flood disasters. The main research objectives of my research is to understand the importance of SAR data and then design a solution architecture evaluating the existing pros and cons of the literature. Various researchers have, have done numerous methods to address this problem and I used a hybrid approach evaluating each method of suggested by this literature. My methodology follows three steps, pre-processing, then thresholding and thematic analysis to segregate the flooded regions from the inland water bodies, and finally the post-processing. These are the results of pre-processing steps. You can see that this is a SAR data, Sentinental 1C SAR data that is taken from the Copernicus Open Access website overlaid on a Google map. Here you can see in the blue color, it indicates the inland water bodies. Now this shows the flooded region in blue color and the black color indicates the inland water bodies. This shows the GN level affected population. The red color indicates the highest affected areas and blue color indicates the least affected areas. Finally, I did a web service implementation to integrate my algorithm as a microservice and that's about my presentation thank you very much mobilize iod service and mobilize mobile application let's first uh, go to the mobilize IoT service. The motivation behind the mobilize IoT service is to facilitate a collaborative decision making environment when using remote sensor data among various authorities and organizations uh, which are responsible for disaster risk mitigation and management. So, this is the overview of the mobilize IoT service. Uh, we have the mobilize IoT platform which is capable of connecting to different uh, remote sensor data sources like National Building Research Organizations, uh, Department of Irrigations, and Oxfams, and etc. So, if we go through the architectural overview of the IoT service, we have the IoT Data Visualizer, which is connected to the database API, and we have IoT API Manager, which directly communicates uh, with the mobilized database. So. Uh, database API is capable of uh, retrieving data from the mobilized database and sending them to the IoT data visualizer when requested uh, so that the IoT data visualizer can visualize the relevant data on different screens. And uh, if you go to IoT API manager, it is capable of connecting to different uh, remote data sources and getting uh, data from the sensors and uh, putting them uh, into the mobilized database. So this is the uh, welcome screen for the mobilized IoT service. Uh, we have the menu button at the bottom of the screen. If we click on it, uh, we get to select uh, the country. So let's select Sri Lanka and then we will be flown to the Sri Lankan map. Uh, we have uh, two different filters organizations and areas if you select organization uh, we will be seeing a list of organizations uh, which are available for the country and we can select one or more organizations and press select and then we can uh, select uh, different areas here 
uh, in this case we have districts uh, click select you can select multiple districts and press select uh, whenever after we pressing select uh, we'll be able to see a list of uh, census stations uh, which is matching to the selection criteria we just uh, completed and then if we click on one of the census station which is visible on the map we will be able to see a dashboard containing uh, different sensor data which is uh, which are available for that census station here in this situation we have a water level sensor for the Mapitigama uh, census station if we click on one of uh, click on the map uh, sorry uh, click on the graph we get uh, the last 30 days of data for that water level sensor and we can select one of the bars so that we can uh, visualize the water level changing of that day so the mobilized mobile app uh, which we call the mobisense uh, so the motivation behind the mobisense app is to alert and update the communities about natural disasters in their respective areas so that those communities can take necessary measures to safeguard their lives and properties uh, with the collaboration of relevant disaster management authorities so this is the mobisense overview uh, so the mobisense uh, mobile app is connected to River level sensor so the users can uh, see the uh, changing of the river level sensor data and uh, they have access to details about evacuation centers and emergency contacts and the mobile app users are getting uh, push notifications uh, especially the uh, alert notifications from the uh, relevant authorities so that uh, they are uh, educated about the relevant uh, disaster situations so if we go through the uh, screens of the mobisense mobile app we have uh, the mobile app available in all the three languages english Sinhal, and tamil if you see select monitoring at the bottom menu uh, we will be able to see the available river level sensors and if you select one of the sensors uh, we'll be able to see the last three days of uh, sensor data Similarly, if you select evacuation centers, we'll be able to see them on the map and if you select one of them, uh, we'll be able to see the relevant data for that uh, evacuation center. And we also have the emergency contacts and the warnings uh, from uh, the relevant authorities about the disaster situations as, is, uh, as displayed on the screen. So thank you. Hello everyone, I am Senuga Disara from Department of Building Economics, University of Moratua. I have conducted my study in the area of disaster management. Uh, so my title is Digitally Enhanced Disaster Preparedness Approach to Natural Disasters in Sri Lanka. Moving to introduction, since the frequency and intensity of disasters are increasing day by day, presently disaster preparedness is given high consideration by the disaster management practitioners. Disaster preparedness can be considered as a specific goal in disaster management which aims to reduce the adverse impacts of a possible hazard and ensure the effective response and recovery. However, current traditional disaster preparedness approaches have several limitations such as lack of coordination, issues in information dissemination, absence of central authority, and existing preparedness principles will be outdated and skills will degrade time to time. Therefore, the practitioners try to overcome these challenges by introducing digital technologies to disaster preparedness systems. The aim of my study is to investigate the role of digital technology to enhance the disaster preparedness approach in Sri Lanka. To achieve the aim, five objectives were established. Moving to key findings, initially the challenges of existing information and coordination systems for disaster preparedness investigated. Accordingly, 10 key challenges are identified based on the experiences of disaster preparedness practitioners in national, district, divisional and gram nivaladari administrational levels. Next. The user requirements for a digitally enhanced information and coordination system that can be utilized for disaster preparedness in Sri Lanka were identified. Here, both the user requirements uh, 
of authority member and the community members are gathered and presented them in a single user story map. Based upon the most important user requirements from, uh, that were identified from the user stories, a framework to show the nature of a digitally enhanced information and coordination system that can be utilized for disaster preparedness in Sri Lanka was designed. According to the framework, this proposed system has six subsystems as coordination subsystem, evacuation management subsystem, vulnerability identification subsystem, data management subsystem, and communication management subsystem and awareness management subsystem. Therefore, uh, this proposed system can be considered as an ideal system to overcome the existing challenges and enhance the effective disaster preparedness approach in Sri Lanka through the digital integration. Thank you. Thank you, Senuri. I am Yami Dasandara and my study is about enhancing policy implementations towards successful climate change mitigation and adaptation in Sri Lanka. As you all know, climate change has become an emerging issue all over the world. Different reasons can affect for the occurrence of climate change and we can identify those reasons as natural forces and human driven forces. These human driven forces are highly affecting for the occurrence and acceleration of this climate change rather than natural forces. In Sri Lanka as well, the same situation can be identified where the country is experiencing a number of climate change impacts. As a result, the country is experiencing different climate change challenges in different ways and we can identify those challenges as economic, social and environmental challenges. Climate change mitigation and adaptation can be identified as the most appropriate ways of overcoming these climate change challenges. So, different types of policies and plans have been formulated and implemented within the country as the adaptation and mitigation responses for these climate related issues. When implementing these policies and plans, different barriers can be identified. These barriers can be categorized under six main categories as economic, social, institutional, technological, informational and other barriers. So there is a higher need of applying appropriate strategies to overcome these barriers in climate change policy implementations in order to achieve successful climate change policy implementations within the country. So the aim of this study is to improve the policy implementations towards climate change adaptation and mitigation in Sri Lanka. To achieve this aim, these four objectives were formulated. When it comes to the key findings of this study, here I have identified what are the climate change challenges facing Sri Lanka today. So these challenges were identified under three main categories as economic, environmental and social challenges. Here I have identified barriers of the climate change policy implementations in Sri Lanka. So these barriers were identified under six main categories. Here I used NVivo software and you can see the software outputs through these two images in the slide. This diagram shows the what are the barriers of climate change policy implementations in Sri Lanka under the six main categories and under each barrier the root causes for those barriers were also identified. So this is the overview of my study and uh, now I hand over the presentation to Damsari. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Miami. Uh, have a good day to all. Uh, I am Dutara Damsari uh, and my research area is to develop a framework uh, to support risk sensitive urban development in Sri Lanka. So uh, uh, this is my background background of my research so urbanization is one of the key challenge facing Sri Lanka today and a western province will be a prime urban hub of South Asia in future so people who are living in rural areas uh, move urban areas for such employment uh, for existing infrastructure for basic facilities and for their investment so, however this urbanization has badly affected to the environment and it caused to increase the urban risk 
So I have identified several types of urban risk uh, such as capital risk, institutional and uh, policy risk, social or cultural risk, environmental risk and economic risk. So this urbanization has badly affected the environment and it caused to increase the urban risk because uh, people concentrating in large cities with poor basic facilities and poor plants. Moreover, as a developing country uh, in Sri Lanka has faced several natural disasters such as coastal erosion, droughts, floods, landslides, tropical cyclones, etc., a tsunami, and uh, approximately 500,000 people are affected uh, per year. So, it is needed to go with risk sensitive urban development projects and um, we can uh, go under that, we can uh, use several ways such as we can use uh, uh, app your appropriate building design, plan constructions and we can enhance the infrastructure, we can enhance the basic facilities for them and uh, we can do a risk awareness programs and we can do pre-risk assessment before starting the projects. So those kinds of things can be done under the risk sensitive urban development. So, uh, the aim of my research is to propose suitable approaches for implementing risk sensitive urban development in Sri Lanka. Uh, in order to achieve my aim, there are four objectives. First one is uh, review the state of the art in risk sensitive urban development approaches. Then I explore the different disaster risk consideration in urban development projects in Sri Lanka. Then I uh, capture the requirements for an effective risk sensitive urban development approaches in Sri Lanka and finally I develop a framework for supporting risk sensitive urban development in Sri Lanka. Uh, uh, currently uh, I am considering uh, I am conducting literature review under this area and uh, I have collected these points so far uh, under that I, I uh, as I mentioned in background I identified several types of urban risk and uh, those are the key challenges uh, in future so urban population urban setting urban structures compact urban forms urban dependence on rural areas urban governance and management will uh, affect to the urban risk and those will be major challenges for Asian countries in futures uh, so uh, we have to move for risk sensitive urban development in order to mitigate this uh, mitigate the risk so on uh, risk sensitive urban development means it is an innovative planning approach that can transform the way of the cities to face the uncertainties and risk so uh, when, uh, before we doing the uh, when we doing the urban development project we can, if we go can with risk sensitive urban development we can mitigate those urban risk so that is the that is my research area uh, and th I next invite Lichini to continue the presentation and thank you. Thank you, Kansir. I'm Lichini Nikesha and have a good day to all. My research topic is characteristics of a digital platform for supporting an early warning system for dam risk in Sri Lanka. Generally, dams are engineering structures which can be found in wide range of locations around the world. According to the intended purpose and the usages, there are small, medium and large size of dams. So dams can be used to manage soil erosions, moderate water and sedimental flows, improve the lands, accumulate water and to control and navigate water supplies for agricultural purposes. Even though there are well improved engineering knowledge and the construction qualities, dam breaks can be caused due to the structural failure. Apart from that, natural hazards, human action, aging of the dams as well as improper management also can be caused for the dam breaks. Therefore, it is vital to manage the risk associated with the dam breaks as it can be caused for various damages for both human life and the property. So, it can be done through forecasting losses or damages and their possibility through risk assessment and by determining the risk mitigation strategy. So, early warning systems can be identified as a strategy that can be used to reduce the risk associated with the dam breaks. When considering about the Sri Lanka, there are very ancient dams and Sri Lanka is also prone to have natural disasters. Therefore, Sri Lanka is also a country which is at the risk of dam failures. 
As a result, it is vital to have early warning system for dam breaks in Sri Lanka. So the messages through these early warning systems should be well accurate, understandable and clear for the community. And also, early warning systems should be considered about the all impacts of dam breaks in terms of social, political and environmental parallax. As a result, digital platform can be identified as the ideal solution that can be used to interconnect all the different paradigms of early warning system. Therefore, the aim of this research is to investigate the characteristics of an early warning system that can be used during the dam breaks in Sri Lanka. That aim of this study is going to be achieved through these five objectives. The literature review of this study is going to be explore about the dam constructions including dam types, purpose of the dams and the dam breaks as well as the risk associated with the dam breaks with the causes for dam breaks and the impacts of dam breaks and also the functional requirements and the current practices of early warning systems with their associated barriers will be explored through the literature review. Finally, all the collected data through this literature review and their different data collection techniques will be analyzed and incorporated with the mobilized digital platform in order to create early warning system for dam breaks in Sri Lanka. So, now I invite Dr. Menaha Madam to continue this presentation. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the presentation from our research scholars. At the next and final part of this session, I would like to share the impact of Mobilize project and the way forward. The research undertaken related to disaster risk reduction would make positive impacts within Sri Lanka and in global context. The impacts are mainly on three key areas that are technological enhancement, policy level enhancement and advancement on the research. As you see from several research projects showcasing, there were a number of research focusing on technically enhanced such as Internet of Things, SAR and digital platforms. The policy enhancement is also focusing on climate mitigation and adaptation. Further, the research promotes collaborative decision making environments, alerts and updates the communities about natural disasters, improves preparedness and improves early warning system. Some of these projects also capture user requirements which will be a key when we want to address the issues faced by grassroots level communities. The research project also helped us to establish collaboration both at national level and international level. Through this collaboration, it facilitates the project partners to know each other on a one-to-one -one basis. This has placed a great level of confidence among the project partners to network and collaborate with each other for future initiatives. Capacity development is another key impact of this project. There is a good pool of talents and skills that are connected to a single platform, hence knowledge sharing and dissemination activities are effectively undertaken. The team members when conducting any research seminars or workshop at local level universities usually invite all the project partners, hence it opens up new avenues for us to gain knowledge. In addition, joint publications at high impact journals and in-text conferences and joint supervision of research degrees help the local researchers to outreach their knowledge in a wider context. The project provides the necessary funding and opportunities for the researchers to do a research degree while working on the project. Further, the exposure gained by the researchers working in Mobilize project and the contacts they developed with project partners have positively contributed several researchers to find good opportunities to pursue their higher studies. In that line, seven students who were working on the project has received full scholarships to undertake their doctoral studies at universities in UK and Australia. The project also provides a platform to work across the various departments and faculties within the university in supporting to strengthen the multidisciplinary collaboration. As a way forward, building on the current Mobilize project, another project called Transcend, technology enhanced stakeholder collaboration for supporting risk sensitive sustainable urban development has been secured. The project is currently in the process of obtaining the approval it has several partners, two from UK, two from Malaysia, and one from Pakistan. 
The local partners are from Department of Earth Resources, Engineering, Computer Science and Engineering and Building Economics. As such, demonstrating the multidisciplinary nature again. With that, I will conclude my presentation. Thank you for listening our presentation. Stay safe.